more evidence. We'll go ahead and get to that later. Now, mm-hmm. I don't want to toot my own horn, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a high school dropout, man. I've gotten a lot of things wrong before, but one thing I was right about was this right. damn Megan and Tory case. <laughs> Even though we watched a lot of the hip hop community engage in what I would describe as misogyny, uh, there's a term called misogyny noir. I think they come out with which is a particular brand of misogyny that's directed towards black women. I read yeah. some short form articles on that, but that's aside from that. We reported on the story how the phone call came out that swayed a lot of people's opinion. Yeah. Then she got a victory against 5150. Two days ago, Streets TV, Alex Alonzo, the good people at Streets TV and Alex Alonzo did some good work in presenting a lot of the evidence that was in the trial that we didn't get to see. We might have heard about, might have been reported on. We even talked about it a little bit. But now we could see it with our own eyes. And boy, Bob, you've seen it. Yeah, you're somebody who uh, you I was had questionable. Your doubts. Yeah, I, had, you I was doubts, doubts. You know, doubts um, about the shooting. Doubts about you know pulling the bullet fragments out of foot. Yes. Okay. So that. so let's stay there. Let's stay there. Bullet fragments in the foot. Let's see if we could even get to that part because I think we have. Um, I'm going to share with you, but we even have. Um, we even have some notes. Alex Alonzo, if you guys go to Street TV, they even got notes under the video where you can kind of tap in right where you want to see the different exhibits. I recommend everybody just sit through the 30-minute video like I did about twice. <laughs> uh, it's some pretty damning stuff. Now, as far as whether she got shot or not, we could – let's go ahead and start yeah. around – Exhibit 34A, where they have x-ray photos of Megan's left foot with bullet fragments. Let's see if we can get Get right Megan's foot. This would be witness number seven, Dr. Lee Haruno, H-A-R-U-N-O. He came in Thursday morning on December 15th. This would have been day four. And exhibit 34A is imaging that he did of Megan's foot. And then this is a picture of her left foot. And he testified about the fragments that were in her foot. And it's not just these two big fragments that you see, but there are a bunch of tiny other little fragments, microscopic fragments that he characterized as metallic foreign bodies. And exhibit 34B is a picture of the same foot from a different angle. This is her left foot, and Ooh. you see two huge metallic foreign bodies and a bunch of tiny other smaller particles, which came from the same, the same object. And then 34C is another photo of the same exact foot from another angle. I think this is a cross-section angle, and those two white parts are the same bullet fragments from 34B and 34A. I'm going to stop it there for a second. I think with this, we could kind of put to bed the theories that she wasn't shot, that she stepped on glass, that she made that part up, because I personally observed an old live where Tori was trying to push that agenda, that she stepped on glass. We now know that we found a gun in his position. You know what I'm saying? It was closest to him in the car. We got blood in the car, and now we're seeing x-rays of the bullet fragments that were in her foot. What say you? I mean, if they're confirming that those bullet fragments, this is the only this is the only how it's getting me where I'm kind of a little confused. Where okay. it's like she got shot, right? So, you know, that bullet, that bullet has four. So maybe it didn't hit her directly, maybe it hit something else. And the fragments went into her foot. Oh well, they definitely addressed that. And does she video. have a bullet um, hole? Okay, does she have well, a bullet that, hole in her foot? I mean, if it went in her foot, yeah, it had to it had to make a hole to get in there. I mean, it's right. not a but it's, it's like not a ghost in there. Sit, 
you get what I'm saying? It's like the power of a bullet. Let me, let me ask you this. If she got hit by a ricochet bullet, yeah. right? Gotcha. Does yeah. that still count as her getting shot? Yeah. Yeah, if she got hit by like, okay, the bullet hit the ground, it broke into piece and went into her foot. Yeah, she got shot. That's I all I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? So, but that's just where it's a little gray area where you know, like, I would have to see other people getting shot in their foot and seeing, like, okay, what I don't know. I don't know what it looks like when somebody gets shot in their foot. That's that's fair. And I think that's <laughs> what I was trying to like. I had people who was arguing me down to the ground saying that, well, when you get shot in your foot, how was she able to be at a party? so quickly after like if somebody got shot in the foot it would take longer for them to recover well we don't know all bullet wounds is is different in some kind of way and but maybe if you get hit with fragments maybe if it's a ricochet maybe you could stand to recover quicker maybe but maybe she recovered when she recovered but i think we can't deny that she was shot or a bullet frag, yeah, or, yeah, shot, yeah, because the bullet fragments went into her foot, you know. Yeah, and then we got we got a doctor that testified to this. This is a doctor that's pulling the fragments out of her goddamn foot. So we can't, we got to respect that. I mean, if we don't, if we don't accept evidence, then we're just in denial. There's nothing wrong with being skeptical, but if we're looking at evidence and we can't accept that, then we're in denial. Yeah, or no. Yeah, that's just what, what that's just what raised my question with seeing that it would okay. just be like, Fair enough. man, you know how could a how could somebody get shot and the bullet stay in the foot? That's just where is. Well, you know, little, well that could, that just means we we could stand to learn a little bit more yeah, about yeah. bullet wounds, you know. And we ain't doctors, so we learn right. as we go along with a lot of this stuff. That's why it's important that we get uh, information from good sources and. I, I'll say this guy is a lot more fair and balanced uh, with covering the details of the case than Milagro or DJ Academics or uh, that uh, uh, that guy who used to be a, fre- uh, a federal agent from Fresh and Fit, you know, uh, yeah. that uh, that other attorney that goes by the name Mo. I think it's important to note that they was all on the wrong side of this and their cre- their credibility should, I ain't going to say, you know, I, I like I, I, well, Mo for 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 sure. His credibility should be called into, called into question. DJ Academics, I mean, he is a guy who's you know f- following media, but damn, Mo is a lawyer, and he was like mm-hmm. leaving this kind of stuff out. And he said that he was at the case. So for him to say that you know it wasn't a lot of evidence against Tory when we're seeing all of this evidence for our time for the this is the shit that he saw and he didn't feel like it was hard evidence. That's kind of funny to me. Another thing mm. I heard people saying, ask, ask, ask me if you, um, tell me, tell me if you heard this, people saying that Tory was too, too short to have shot over the car and hit Meg. <laughs> wait, so wait, he shot over the car and hit her? Yeah. That, that's the report? Yeah. And Kelsey kind of testified to something that lines up with that too. You never heard people say that? I got into a bunch of arguments about that, so that came up. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I never heard that. Well, one. I'm going to show you a little a little part that stood out to me. They have um, the running board on the Escalade. Listen up. To the corner. Exhibit 44 is just a photo of the running board on the side of the Escalade that they wanted to highlight. Now, remember, this is Officer Cabral testifying on recall. So that means that these are these are points that the prosecution wanted to emphasize that they didn't the first time. The importance of the running board is because we heard testimony from Megan that Tory may have been standing on something that elevated him. And then if you listen to to Kelsey Harris's interview from September, she says something similar so the prosecutor wanted to show the jury that hey this truck has this running board for those of you who are confused on how can someone be standing elevated i even think that um kelsey may have said something like it seemed like he was just up in the air elevated 
in that previous interview that she gave, which I have posted that you can check out. But that's exhibit 44, just to show the running board. But if you notice, you can look at the seat and you can see some blood. That's Megan's blood on on the seat there behind the drive. Now, that's important. You see her blood on the seat. There's also pictures of blood on luggage. Remember, Kelsey said that she didn't know if Megan was shot. She don't remember. She was drunk. It's kind of hard to forget somebody coming back into a vehicle with you and they're bleeding all over the place. And it's kind of mm. hard to imagine that they wouldn't be talking about what the fuck just happened. Right or wrong. Yeah. So another part that is important to highlight that um that speaks to Kelsey's credibility. This was the the one that really stood out to me. Kelsey says that she didn't know that Meg was injured. She talking about it could have been glass or whatever she said that was on the stand, which totally differs from the lengthy interview that she gave that's recorded where she is saying that Tori shot Meg. But this is body cam footage of Kelsey with Megan's blood on her leg. Let's go to that. When they pulled it over. Then exhibit. Okay, hold on. My bad. 45. It's the LAPD body cam footage that shows blood on Kelsey's legs, even though she's not the one bleeding. That was an important point that the prosecution wanted to bring up. Because they want they wanted the jury to know that Kelsey Harris was clearly aware of Megan's injuries, even though she didn't provide any information when she testified. And that clip right there showed blood, Megan's blood on her legs. And then that was the last exhibit presented Look while Officer Cabral was legs. on uh, testified as a recall. You see you, that? You're saying it's scratches. You see that? I mean, does it look like it to you? It looks like blood that was dripping on her leg. I, no, I'm I saying I'm scratching. I'm saying on her leg. Look above her ankle. Does that look like that. three scratch That's lines? The, that looks like blood, blood dripping to me. Oh. Yeah. That's what they're calling it. That's what the prosecution did. They litigated the whole case and said that <laughs> yeah. it was blood dripping on her leg. They documented her other injuries where she had a patch of hair ripped out of her head. She had a long bruise on uh, both legs. They documented all of that, but they were sure to say that this was blood. So if it was scratches, we would have. There's nothing. There's nothing that would have hurt their case by saying that. But this right. is Megan's blood dripping on her. So when she said that she wasn't aware of Megan's injuries. We know that it was a lie. I don't think you could forget all of that. Oh, they tested that blood on her and was like, yo, this makes it. I ain't going to say they tested it on her, but she wasn't bleeding. Is it, you could deduce that from just using, I don't know, logic? Yeah, but there's no proof on that. They don't have no evidence that that was Megan's blood. You get what I'm saying? Like, how can you tell me? You could say, okay, this is proof it's Megan's blood, but it's like, how do you know for sure? You get what I'm saying? Because she was the only one bleeding. I get what you're saying, but how can we like, we need some evidence to say, okay, we tested this and this was Megan's blood. Okay, cool. But it's just to say you had blood on your, you had blood on your leg and that was so Whose blood was it, Bob? If it wasn't Megan's know. blood. I'm saying if they had, if they're saying that, if they're reporting on that. I'm saying, I'm saying the saying evidence that. is that there was somebody else who was shot in the car. So right. that's, that's the evidence. You feel me? There was yeah. some passenger that was shot in the car. She has blood dripping on her, but she's not the one bleeding. Uh, it's, it's, it's reasonable to deduce that it was Megan's blood. And if it wasn't her but blood, then who the hell's beat blood her up? Didn't Tori beat Kelsey up too? Well, that's what Kelsey said. Right. And so then she could, denied it. Oh, okay. So she could have. So she ain't getting no harm on her. Nothing happened to her. She's not hurt or beat. Okay, I, look, I get it. That's an interesting yeah. theory. That could have been Kelsey's blood from the the previous incident. She managed to what clean up the blood wherever it was coming from, and maybe say that it was Megan's blood when it really wasn't. You think that's possible? No, I just it's the confirmation where they're saying this is Megan's blood. You get what I'm saying? We're like they're sure. Right, look. Well, I might not be able to convince you, but they was able to convince those <laughs> juries of the jury. Yeah, they did. Uh, yeah. And, and that, I think that was a, a, a big, I think that was a knockout punch. 
because it really shows that Kelsey's testimony on the stand was not credible, in my opinion. We always gonna have some doubters, but I mean, come on, you're gonna have that. Yeah. You're never gonna be able to convince 100% of people. There's a couple other stories that I wanted to get to before we.